So let's tone down a little bit about drawing and focus on real stuff. Real talk lang tayo ngayon kasi I want you to win and winning is a serious matter. So, gusto mong itumba yung laging tumatalo sa'yo sa division level. Every single time, pare-pareho mo kayo nakikita mo sa division and lagi ka natatalo. So, let me share a short story about a battle that I had back in the days. During a regional battle in Legazpi, Albay, I'm from Naga City, by the way, I wanted to win so bad kasi liman libo yung premium. And gustong gusto kong makuha yun dahil bibili ko siya ng bike para hindi na ako humingi ng pamasahe sa magulang ko. So, ilang araw akong halos hindi makatulog kakaisip ng magandang piyesa, magandang kombinasyon ng kulay, yung magandang wepo na magtutumba sa kalaban ko. Yung practice ako ng ilang beses to make sure na matatapos ko siya on time. And guess what? Second place lang. Yung bike ko naging bola na lang. Parang gusto ko na lang mag-basketball, ayoko na mag-poster making. And the reason I was defeated was because there needs to be a slogan within the poster. And I didn't know that. My coach didn't say that to me. So, hinabul ko na lang siya on the later part. Which means I don't have enough space for the text to be inserted to the poster. So, I had the most visually appealing entry. I don't have photos of it. I am very sorry. Hindi pa kasi uso camera noon. The judges and the other coaches are like talking about my work. It still did win. So, let's get back to the paano manalo sa poster making. Konektado yung kinwento ko kanina eh. So, upon years of experience joining, po joining poster making contests back in the day. Imagine, 2005 ako gumraduate. And until now, I'm doing contests as long as it's related to art and videography. Merong apat na bagay na dapat yung bigyang pansin para manalo. At ito ay base sa personal na opinion ko. This goes from least to the most important. Number four. Magandang drawing. It's very ironic because we're talking about posters, boy. And it's the least important factor kung, kung bakit mananalo ka. May iintindihan yung mamaya kung bakit. May tatlong bagay para mas importante sa magandang drawing. So, paano maging maganda drawing mo? Basic millennial stuff, guys. YouTube mo, buwa ng wika theme. Wikang katutubo. There's a lot of result that you can absorb from what is available to you right now because we don't have YouTube before, man. And all I have to do is to rely on what my small brain can process and basis sa mga natutunan ko sa mga dati kong laban. So that's all I have. I don't have someone who's telling me like I'm telling you right now. On this part, all you have to do is to research, implement, and then do the mastery. Okay? So, three things pagdating sa kung paano magiging magandang drawing ng post. So again, it's research, YouTube ka, ask for someone ang marunong, there's a lot of different ways. And then implementation. So you have to implement what you learn. You have to practice. Bumili ka ng napakamurang pastel, try to do this, some, some small objects on a, on a, on a cup and bun. Uh, implement and practice. So, implement what you learn. And the last thing is mastery. Doon, pa, doon papasok yung efficiency mo. Nasa totoong labang ka na. So, pag sinabing one hour or two hours, you have to finish your work in the most efficient way. So, kung yung napakagandang gawa mo natatapos mo ng five hours, you have to make it two hours. Doon din papasok yung, yung innovation. So, ano ba yung innovation? Yung parang mag-iisip ka ng something na bago na hindi pa ginagawa ng mag innovate ka. For example, everybody's doing on a whiteboard. Why not try to do it in a blackboard? You reverse the illustration board, then try to do your artwork on that part. So it's a little bit different, pero makakayanan mo. Kasi you are a master yourself. You've mastered pastel. You mastered the medium. Kahit wala kang talent, pero pag may pagpupursigi ka, gagaling at gagaling ka sa pag-drawing. Ito yung sinasabing hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. Alam mo yung 
kapus ka sa talento pero araw-araw ka nagpa-practice mag-drawing. I mean, in a year, yung ina-idolize mong seatmate mo na napakagaling mag-drawing, mas magiging magaling ka pa dun. So I don't wanna get detailed about the principles of art, like balance, proportion, emphasis, variety, movement, rhythm, all those jargons, man. You just need a draw. You have to implement what you learn. Bago ko din naman nagawa yung mga posters na pinakita ko in the past videos, I have done hundreds of them before. So that's it. Uh, the least important of the four, magandang drawing. Let's go to the third, most important one. Third, The third most important one is magandang konsepto. Dito, utak na gagamitin mo, eh, hindi lang yung mata. So unang-una natin titignan siyempre yung theme. Idadisect natin siya. Hihimayin natin siya hanggang sa pinaka-pinong hibla. So para sa akin, may tatlong, may tatlong portion ng pagka-conceptualize. So again, It has to be researched, it has to be implemented, and it has to be integrated. So again, research, implementation, and integration. Sa research, magsaliksi ka about the theme. Wikang katutubo tungo sa isang bansang Pilipino. So dun tayo sa subject, which is yung wikang katutubo. Ano ba yung wikang katutubo? May mga simbolismo ba para dito? Search for symbols, relevant objects. Icons, for example, the katutubo attire, the katutubo patterns, the katutubo symbols. Pagdating naman sa wika, you have you have the symbolism of books, ink, pen, light, the by buying, and so on and so forth. Then dun tayo sa predicate, which is tungo sa isang bansang Pilipino. Ano ba yung isang bansang Pilipino? Ang isang bansang Pilipino nagkakaisa, maunlad, yun, may unity. Ano ba ang pwedeng simbolismo don? Like shake hands, the dove, the symbolism of peace. And then another important thing is the supporting details. Like, paano ba tayo naging Pilipino? Ano ba yung pagiging Pilipino? So you have to think of the icons that represent the Philippines. Um, Jeepney, Carabao, Kubo or Philippine flag, Juan, you know, with the guy, the guy with the salakot. There's a lot of things that you can implement in your work. So now, That goes to the second part, which is the implementation. You have to draw it, man. That's just as simple as that. Whatever you have in your mind, like the icons, all the symbols, and the concepts, you have to implement it into a drawing, whatever style you want. And lastly is the integration. You have to integrate all the concepts that you have uh, you have re researched and implemented. So sa integration, tanungin mo yung sarili mo. Paano mo sila pagsasamasamahin? in a way that it reflects the thing. So sa napakadami ng objects na napag-isipan mo, na drawing mo, you have to come up with a way to integrate them into one where it speaks about the thing. For example, my word tayo na tungo sa thing, di ba? So when you talk about tungo, it's like papunta into something, di ba? So you can, you can implement like a road that connects your concept of wikang katutubo towards isang Pilipino, di ba? It doesn't have to be a road. It has, it, it can be a pathway. It can be some directing lines. There's a lot of things you, that you can do. You just need a little bit of creative juice on how you can integrate everything. So it's, it's, it's actually the most important part of conceptualization. Kasi siya yung magbibigay ng kahulugan eh. I mean, pwede, pwede, pwede ka mag-drawing ng apple dyan eh. Diba? Magandang apple. But what does it mean? It doesn't mean anything. Pero pag nilagyan mo siya ng bata na kinakain yung apple, it talks about health. ba? Diba? Eh, paano kung lagyan mo pa ng libro yung kanang kamay ng bata? And it talks about education. So, the integration of all the objects that you have in mind will speak of something different. So, the combination of all your ideas into one. That's integration. That's how I do my conceptualization process, man. Pagsasamasamahin natin yung fragments of ideas natin into one poster. So research, implement, and integrate. At alam niyo ba kung bakit number three ang, ang magandang concept at hindi siya number four? Mas mahalaga siya sa magandang drawing. Why? Mas mataas yung relevance to the theme and yung concept na criteria sa mechanics compared sa creativity like the art itself so usually hati yan eh konsepto tapos creativity so relevance to the theme you know and originality those are the things that you have to consider 
kapag lalaban. Minsan din di ba nakakapagtaka, bakit natatalo yung may pinakamagandang entry? If you can recall, last month, I actually covered a poster making at a local mall here in Naga. And it was about nutrition month. And then, syempre sponsor yung mall, which is the Robinson's Mall. Same thing with what everyone is having for the nutrition month. I think it was kumain ng masto, maging aktibo, push natin to. So what happened there was both the second and the third place are far more visually appealing compared to the first place. Why? Kasi napaganda yung concepto niya. Since Robinson yung nag-host ng contest, ginamit niya yung card ng Robinson para i-express yung idea ng push natin to while the concept of pagkain ng wasto at pagiging aktibo is within the cart. Can you imagine that? I mean, that was so clever. So push natin to, push natin yung cart ng Robinson Small. I mean, that was so good. If you will look at it, the art is not as good as the second and third place, but it won. And the reason is, the concept behind his work is so strong, so that's it. That's the third most important thing that you have to consider. Magandang concept. Second most important thing is the contest mechanics. It's way more important than magandang drawing and magandang konsepto. Why? Dahil ang contest mechanics ang magdidikta ng tama at mali. Di ba gusto mo manalo? What if pagtingin mo sa contest mechanics, 100% ang originality. They don't need uh, relevance to the theme. They don't need creativity. All you have to do is to be original. Eh di magdodrawing na lang ko ng kamote doon. Lagyan ko ng konting blending, panalo na ako. Lahat sila, lahat sila nagbubi kang katutubo, nagbabaybayin eh. eh. Ako kamote lang, okay na. Why? Original ako eh. Wala akong, ka- wala akong kapareho eh. Tuldukan mo lang yung papel mo, panalo ka na kasi original ka. Wala kang kapareho. I mean, compared to the rest of the work, your work is the most original. So you can win the contest. So paano kung mali yung oras at lugar na pinuntahan mo? Dahil hindi mo binasa yung contest mechanics. What if bawal pala gumawit ng oil pastel? At yun, and yun yung ginamit mo. What if ang required na materialis ay dugo ng manok? I know that's absurd guys, but my point is, you have to read the contest mechanics word after word. Isang maling pagkakabasa lang ng isang word may napakalaking epekto nun sa resulta kung mananalo ka o hindi. Remember my story, di ba? I didn't know na dapat pala may slogan. So natalo ako. So do you get my point na napakalaking, na napaka-importante ng contest mechanics when it comes to determining kung mananalo ka o hindi. Dahil kahit anong ganda ng drawing mo, kahit anong ganda ng konsepto mo, kung sa sepak takraw ka pala ilalaban ng, con- ng coach mo, it's all for nothing, dude. Kasi kailangan may mastery ka ng contest tools. Kasi pag master mo ng isang bagay, kaya mo na siyang laruin, di ba? And you can use it to your advantage. When you say you can use it to your advantage, you can bend the rules. For example, the contest says you can use anything. Mm, that's a very broad statement. When you say anything, you can do like mixed media. You can do 3D objects. So can you imagine the rest of the guys are using poster paint, oil pastel, crayola, and you're doing 3D things. Kapag pinagtabi-tabi ang mga trabaho nyo, and nagpap yung sayo, ikaw na yung manalo. I-check mo kung ano yung, ano yung butas ng mechanics and use it to your advantage. Sa tingin ko, uh, yung contest mechanics, it's more on the coach's job to digest every word para siguraduhin mananalo ka. But, but you have to take responsibility of reading the contest mechanics itself dahil ikaw yung contest. Oh, let me give you an example. 2017, SM launched a contest called Shop and Make Art. And given na yung, given na, given na yung template, kukulayan mo na lang. So the rest of the people colored it with great colors. And there, there are guys who leveled it up, who made 3D objects. What I did was an installation art. Instead of, you know, coloring the pattern that they have given. Pinagdidikit ko yung mga object na related dun sa nakadrawing. So it's still relevant. And then kinulayan ko siya as, as, as one. Kinulayan ko siya ng gold. And boom! Grand prize winner. Hindi ko makasasinabi sa contest tools na kailangan mag-stick to the pattern. 
So, when real artists judged the work, they knew that my work was different. I took advantage of the mechanics. So, nakikita nyo yung importansya ng contest mechanics dun. Lastly, ito yung pinaka-importante sa lahat. Lend me your ears right now. It's mentality and attitude. Walang kwenta lahat ng sinabi ko from the very first second of this video kung wala ka namang planong manalo. Diba? Kasi nakita mo yung link paano manalo sa poster making. Gusto mo lang siya mapanood. Diba? Gusto mo lang siya mapanood pero wala ka namang planong manalo. So ano ba dapat yung mentality at attitude para manalo? Napakasimple lang pero napakayon. Huwag kang magpapatalo. Kasi it means a whole lot than words. Kasi when you say, huwag kang magpapatalo, gagawin mo ang lahat ng iyong makakaya as far as poster making is concerned para hindi ka matalo. Gagawin mo yung number two, pag-aakarala mo yung contest mechanics. I mean, kahit, kahit hindi ka na nga manood dito eh. Pag nandun lang yung winner's attitude mo, yung mentality mo na ayaw mo magpatalo. There's no need for you to watch this video kasi that's the most important thing. Hindi hadlang yung assignment mo sa algebra para hindi ka mag-practice. Gusto mo talaga manalo. Dapat nasa iyo yung winner's mentality na ayaw mo ng second lang. So, paano mo siya gagawin? Lahat ng sinabi ko, pag uwi mo ngayon, gagawin mo yun. Right after watching this video, there will be two kinds of people. Those people who would just watch this and do nothing and those people who watch this and will implement it. The watchers and the doers. You know, when you do, you have the attitude of a winner. Kahit matalo ko pa ng ilang beses, ganun pa rin yung gagawin mo. Follow 2, 3, and 4. Dahil nga meron ka ng winner's attitude, kahit matalo ka, tatayo-tatayo ka pa rin. Babalik ka sa 2, 3, and 4, pag-aaralan ulit lahat, hindi ka susuko. So overall, dun lalabas yung character mo bilang tao na sa kada laban ng buhay, hindi lang sa poster making, dapat preparado ka. Alam mo yung rules? Dahil ignorance, the contest mechanics, excuses no one. So ngayon, balik tayo dun sa kwento ko. Di ba natalo ako, o second lang ako? Sa tingin nyo, kung nag-basketball na lang ako, hindi na nag-poster making ever in my life. Do you think I would be here speaking right in front of you about the things that I've learned in poster making? Di ba hindi? So yung naging attitude ko, Ano ko na talo? Laban lang ulit. Practice. Talo ka na naman. Laban lang ulit. Sabi nga ni Michael Jordan, di ba? I failed many times. That's why I, I succeed. Pag-aralan nyo yung 2, 3, and 4, sigurado mananalo kayo. Pero pag meron kayo ng number 1, which is the most important thing about any battle, hindi lang yung poster making, panalo ka na kaga. Kasi hindi ka man manalo ngayon, you'll surely win in the future. So to wrap it up, guys, the the fourth most important thing is magandang drawing. Third is magandang konsepto. Second is the mastery of contest mechanics. And the first thing is mentality and attitude. It, ito yung pinaka-importante kasi ito yung magpapanalo sa'yo sa loob at labas ng poster making contest. Okay, so that's it guys. I hope you learned something. This is mostly about, you know, me talking in front of a camera. On the next videos, we're gonna talk about drawing again. That's, you know, that's the heart of this channel. See you on the next video. Good luck to your laban. Peace.